one player clear to return, one player remains a healthy scratch, and three players wearing a new piece of equipment. This is Charlie O'Connor with PHLY Sports reporting live from the Flyers practice facility and just here today to give you your daily Flyers practice update. The skating and the availability just ended and it was a surprisingly eventful day here in, uh, in Voorhees at their practice facility. But we'll kick it off with something that isn't related to the roster and lineup per se, more related to how the players look on the ice. So for, for those that aren't aware, and I think most of the hockey community are, uh, there was a, an on-ice death um, over the past little bit. Adam Johnson, a former NHLer, former AHLer, played in the EIHL overseas, uh, was cut by a, stake, a, a skate blade. It, uh, it grazed his neck, and sadly, he did pass away due to that injury. Uh, since then, there's been a lot of talk about whether players in the NHL will begin to wear the uh, the neck guards that may have uh, obviously prevented the tragedy that occurred. Um, it's been tough so far for the players to get their hands on the uh, on the equipment. But today, for the first time, we saw Flyers players on the ice wearing the neck guards. It was Cam Atkinson, Travis Konechny, and Travis Sanheim. I spoke with all three after practice and keep an eye out on allphly.com for an in-depth article on the reasons for it. But the, the gist of it is, is that Atkinson and Konechny expect them to be wearing the neck protection starting on Saturday in games. Travis Sanheim plans to wear the neck protection, but his, uh, his piece of equipment that he had today at practice is actually just on loan from the company he uses. So he's waiting for his actual neck guard to arrive before he can wear it in games. But he just wanted to test it out. And he said, honestly, it was fine. He expects to wear it in games. Uh, my thoughts are, are basically, look, you know, I think it's the safe thing is probably to wear them. I understand that some players, you know, feel like it overheats them. It's a comfort thing. I do think as long as there's there's no mandate on the part of the NHL that they've agreed they've agreed to with the NHLPA that it should be the player's choice. But you know, I fully support any player who wants to put that added protection on. Uh, Cam Atkinson and Travis Konechny actually both noted the fact that you know they have kids, the fact that they have families, and they just want to you know keep themselves as safe as they possibly can. And I think that's a, a completely fair and a, an admirable way to look at it. Sanheim did note that he expects more Flyers players will be wearing the neck guard in the future. He said a lot of these companies are just serious on on back order. Uh, some companies won't have them ready to ship until like February. So. While these three, I think, will be the first on the Flyers, there very well could be more in the coming months and weeks and whatnot. That is the, the equipment side. Now moving to the roster. So the big injury news out of practice today, Mark Stahl on the ice was not wearing one of those non-contact yellow jerseys. Rest for line was. So Rissa Lyon clearly not quite right yet ready to uh, to return. Stahl was wearing the normal jersey. We asked John Tortorella after practice, and John Tortorella confirmed that Mark Stahl is indeed cleared to return. Now, that doesn't mean Stahl will play in Saturday's game against the Vegas Golden Knights. My guess is that he will, if he can play, that he will come into the lineup. Uh, Igor Zamula did sit the entire third period uh, due to some, some mistakes. He had another delay, a game penalty in the second period. And, uh, and that was a little bit of a, uh, a punitive measure, but also just because the Flyers were in a tough game against a really good team. And Tortorell felt like Zamola, you know, was not playing well enough to help them win that game. So it wouldn't shock me at all if, if Stahl comes in for Zamola, given the fact that Zamola didn't even play in the third period. But Tortorella wasn't willing to say one way or the other. And for what it's worth, when they ran lines and pairings today at practice, Stahl was with Ristolainen. So it is possible that Stahl could be cleared, but not yet in the lineup. At the very least, he could return if Tortorella wants him in there. One guy who will not be returning to the lineup, though, on Saturday, Bobby Brink will sit for his third straight game. And I should have an article coming on this in the coming days, because Tortorella actually went into real depth about the decision to keep Brink out. He's been open that, well, he doesn't think Bobby Brink was playing terribly. There was a bit of a dip in his play. And uh, he wanted to have him sit for a game. He's had the, the second game with a back-to-back in L.A., then sat in Carolina. Now the team's on a three-game winning streak. And basically, Tortorella explained today, he reiterated that, look, we want to play the kids. We, we say this is a rebuild. It is a rebuild. But we also want to reward guys who are playing well. And right now, he doesn't think there's any forward in the lineup who deserves to come out for Bobby Brink. This is it's a tough situation because – 
Well, it's definitely getting to the point now for me where I feel like, you know, one game was fine, two games a little much. Now we're getting into that danger zone where a guy is going to sit for a week, a guy in Bobby Brink who really was having a real good start to the year. He looks like an intriguing guy, an intriguing guy for the future who maybe could be a top six winger for the Flyers. I don't like him sitting, but I do understand that. Honestly, they played a real good game in Carolina. They played a real good game in LA. I get it. I, I get not wanting to shake that up. For me personally, I'd probably, you know, take somebody like Ryan Paling out of the lineup. However, Ryan Paling did score in Carolina. So I understand the coach is trying to, to weigh, you know, the, okay, how do we reward guys in the room? How do we make sure that everybody feels like if they play well, they're going to stay in the lineup versus the importance of getting a guy like Brink in. And Tortorell said, look, I want to get Bobby Brink in. I know it's important to get Bobby Brink in. I don't think he's going to be sitting out for much longer. And I don't love the fact that he's sitting but I do understand that, that it's not just as simple as just play the kids. That's all that matters. There is an element of, of building a team and keeping people happy in the locker room and having people feel like there is reward for playing well. And Brink, a few games before the scratch, wasn't playing as well. I think that's true. Right now, pretty much all the forwards aren't playing well. The one guy who isn't playing that well right now, despite this winning streak, is Igor Zamola. He was sat for the third period. There's a chance he might not play on Saturday. So I get it. There's also the element with Brink where he hasn't played a lot of games in single seasons his career. You know, it, two years ago, he played 51 games combined across college and the NHL. Last year, he missed half the season due to the, uh, the hip surgery that kept him out. So he only played about 40 games that year. And in college, the guys only play somewhere in that like 30 to 45 game range. So, you know, maybe there's a little bit of being careful with Brink, knowing that he might not necessarily be used to an 82 game schedule. Maybe they saw him getting a little tired. think maybe it's time to pull back a little bit. So I don't love it, but I'm not willing to you know, crucify the Flyers and John Torrella yet. Now, if this goes another two, three games beyond this, regardless of whether they're winning or not, that's when you start thinking to yourself, okay, Brink isn't playing, wasn't playing poorly enough to justify being sent down. I don't think that would be the right call. But also, you can't have him sitting for two weeks. So find a way to get him back in. But at least for Saturday, Brink will not play. We'll see what happens. Maybe if they lose to Vegas, obviously one of the best teams in the league, the defending Stanley Cup champions, maybe it's a no-brainer that Brink comes back in on Sunday against the Columbus Blue Jackets. And then we're not talking about this anymore. But in the here and now, it's a thing because Bobby Brink looking like a talented young prospect, talented young player for the Flyers, and he's not going to be sitting for his third game. I totally understand the fans who are frustrated about that. That will do it for me from this practice update. Again, it's Charlie O'Connor with PHLY Sports. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And you can tune in after the game on Sunday. I will be joining Bill Matz for post game after the Vegas game. So keep an eye out for that on Saturday as well.